happy Thanksgiving 2017. So there have been a lot of things the last couple of months that have uh, basically been setbacks and kept us from working on Arabella as much as we would like. But we have a lot to be thankful for. A uh, recent trip to Rhode Island definitely comes to mind. So we're constantly being introduced to amazing people through this project. When a friend of mine found out that we were going down to uh, Rhode Island, he told me to get a hold of his friend Marty down at the Newport Shipyard and Marina. Turns out Marty is a badass rigger for some of the J-Class boats on the America's Cup. So he gave us a tour around there, told us what he does, um, and it was really, really cool. So this right here, this is Topaz, this is J8. So these boats were racing the 30s in the America's Cup. And they uh, built all up, I believe that they built 12 or so of them, of which only the English boats still exist oh, wow. in any form. Yeah. So there's, and the reason for that is, it was a rule in the America's Cup that you had to sail to, the, def the challenger had to sail to the defenders, defenders race course, okay. which meant that the English had to build boats after we kicked their ass in the Isle of Wight race which was the Guinea Cup in 1851. It's the oldest trophy available in sport, by the way. It's the America's Cup. Oh, wow. Cool. And so it's cool. It's a cool event. So there's been a resurgence in this class. The modern boats, they've kept traditional underbodies, but they've gone with all this composite rigging. So all this linear, all the componentry that you see here is carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. So that standing rigging package on one side is continuous. Right now we're in a configuration because we've sent all the runner gear off and I'm just stabilizing the rig with the stuff that's here. The boats are uh, aluminum primarily now, although Ranger, which is also over here, is a steel-plated boat, which uh, Velshita is a steel-plated boat as well. The direction is going, you know, aluminum is the way to go, really. Uh, and for all the same reasons, so everyone thinks we want to race all the time because we're really good. Not, not necessarily true. The European boats are way heavier, and that's why they lasted longer. That's why you could find those old hulks. Yeah. So up the Hamble River, where they found the uh, Shamrock and Endeavor, and then they found uh, Velshita was like up in some lake up in the who knows where 30 35 guys to sail the boat and it's just barely enough so it's super fun team sailing so we just raced these boats we have what was called the, the j class worlds and we had six of them racing it was off it was like the first time in history that there's been six of them on the racetrack at the same time and uh so it's a super cool event and it went really really well here we had a big event down at the america's cup with them same again we had after marty showed us around some of the boats he took us to the shipping containers where they keep all of their gear this would be one example of like the ship in container. So this is all of our race rigging. I build custom linear componentry. So like dog bones, like this would be like a, a rigging taco that goes in there, a carbon fiber piece. And then this is going to the rig and then Dyneema covers. And by weight, it's five times stronger than steel. Yeah, but we it, climb. Yeah. We use yeah. Spectra and Dynamy and all that stuff. It's quickly replacing nylon. For sure. The nylon polyester for climbing the is nice base, because yeah. of this, the so stretch, nice you know? We're trying to mitigate that almost everywhere. And so what we do is we anneal the linear componentry. So the Dyneema fiber, most companies have what's called a heat set product. So they actually, they pull it through a machine and then they apply heat to it. It's just like work hardening steel. But generally we don't want creep. And you can see with the carbon fiber stuff with all those, those rigging packages like that, they're built to a metallurgic stretch equivalent that allows them to be a whole lot stronger even though they're sacrificially, they're a little more easy to fuck with. You know, they're, you can shatter it, you yeah. can burn it, you yeah. can cook it, you can, you know, if it gets struck by lightning, you can de deresonate it, which makes it, you know, yeah. warp oh, out. So, yeah. but, you know, with the Dyneema sleeves that we put over stuff, it's like you can start, you can protect the fiber. So really what we do, all these cover, every single one of these covers that's on the race stuff, like we put 33,000 pounds of load on the runner, uh, 33 tons of load on the runner. So when you go to burp the runner off, the heat generated, you just smoke the f***ing cover every time, so the cover is designed specifically for heat mitigation applications as mm -hmm. opposed to another one that we want it to melt and slide when it's going to interface with another piece of Dyneema. You want that because they just slick right up against each other and then you're, you're bulletproof. They settle in, it's all good. So depending upon what we're doing with it, 
the cover blends are totally unique to that. It's pretty cool. It's pretty, yeah, it's cool. And it gets to where you're playing around, you're calling the manufacturer, you're like, dude, give me 33% more of this, or yeah. can I have more Technora, which is good in jammers and grip, but I don't, you know, so it's bad at abrasion. You're like, you're playing around. It's really fun because at the beginning, back in the day, it was polyester. Yeah. That was it, you know, mm -hmm. and polyester sucks, really, <laughs> in most applications where you're doing anything dynamic with the line. It's, yeah. I'm a rope nerd, so that, and then that's that. And we got a full, almost a full shop in here, you know, full rack of tools. Then we got big boy tools in the, in the things. You can build almost any piece of rope in here that I want to build. Drill press, you'll come into some of these, they'll have a lathe. Our natty, who isn't here right now, he's somewhere is a phenomenal, phenomenal woodworker. So he's in, for a boat like that to have an onboard guy who's really can do anything. Mm -hmm. He's fantastic. He's got a full set of personal, his wood hippie tools are like sacrosanct, don't fucking go near him. They're like my rigging. Some mine are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 as they should be, right? On the chisels, you nick one of these, you get nicked. Yeah, you get nicked, <laughs> you fucked, eh? So it's the same with me. I, I'm like, I, got a, I have a full rigging bag. It's like- Don't and, touch it. Well, I, like you, you get to touch it until like somebody. He's now he's always like, yeah, use pliers on the fids. Marty likes the pliers. <laughs> you're gonna push through a piece of rope and you hook all the fibers. You're like, yeah. I always say to people, they're like, oh, what's the deal? I look on any big sailboat. There, are, uh, when you're racing it, there's guys that are just sailors, and then there's guys that are mechanics that know how to sail. So like something goes bad with any of the rope on the boat and or the rigging or a loft or whatever, I'm on it. There's a sailmaker, if not three on board, we rip something, a kite gets torn, it's all hands and we're fixing it on the next leg. Mm -hmm. There's mechanics, there's winch specific and the deck hardware guys are becoming more like back in the day it was like you clean winches, you do a little splicing, you do a little bit. It's become much more acute. Those winch packages are stupid. You know, the gear that we're using, the size of the spindle, I mean look at this, the runner block is you can hardly pick the thing up and it's made out of titanium you know what yeah. i mean it's like that thing's with it's, it's it's a 50 pound block when all is said and done i mean you can't you, it's there there is no small anymore and the loads are tremendous and what happens is the boats get so racy and you're like okay let's go lighter and lighter because there's some geek from north sales at the back saying that you're like uh, <laughs> you're looking at stuff and you're like i don't know if that's strong enough. <laughs> i don't even, i don't even near that you know so it's cool it's cool stuff yeah this is pretty cool yeah well yeah the <laughs> other i mean if you ever got a chance to go out to the vineyard gannon and benjamin they're mm -hmm. both i mean you've probably been to some awesome boat yards already but no, they're not really actually you'd we're love it dude started. those guys you're you're uh, well i we're, thought we really sure. are just like Wait two it. two rogue dudes from it's great dude you're just like yeah we're gonna buy yeah. the plans we're gonna cut down the trees we're gonna build the boat you're telling a great story you guys for sure <laughs> and, the, and and watching the film is awesome it's incredible is that you're building it and and, yeah, and you're gonna have to learn how to use it too yeah exactly <laughs> you know like you're gonna be able to fix it and everything like that but like learning yeah. to use it is a, is a whole nother ball game yeah and and it'll it'll put a little bit of some cool energy into because you have a vested interest in the vehicle itself unlike a lot of people who are like yeah i bought the boat whatever I fuck it up if it up, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I gotta go grab some lunch, you guys. Sweet. Great. Hey, it was I great will, to meet uh, you. It's great to meet you. Yep. So, on Marty's recommendation, we ended up going and checking out Iris, um, which is a really sweet boat building program. Um, and we talked to Bill Kenyon, who gave us some of the details. So, Iris, the International Yacht Restoration School, is a trade school where they've got a couple different uh, trade programs. But what we really found interesting was the wooden boat building and restoration part. It's a two-year full-time program from Monday through Friday. You show up 8.30 to 5 o'clock. You basically learn all about boat building. The first year, you do individual bench projects leading to building up a toolbox. Um, you do simple joints. You follow plans. You're working from center line. And then you move on in teams, and you end up lofting a beetle cat by taking the measurements straight off the boat. Then you rebuild the boat. In the second year, uh, the boats change depending on what they have available. They're usually donated or just boats that they can find. And so then you actually loft and then you build the molds and then you rebuild and replank. At some point you pull off in twos and you make scale drawings, you find your mistakes, and then you make a construction plan and you do a half model. So pretty cool. Definitely recommend checking them out. Behind the workshop is the Coronet. And Marty actually talked to us a little bit about that. And another place I'll send you guys to down the road, which is totally worth going to, in particular for what you guys are doing, is the International Yacht Restoration School, oh, which cool. is on Thames Street. And they're doing the Coronet restoration in there, which is as badass a rig as you're ever going to see. She's 185 feet. When she was all out, she was like 225. She's one of the last, 1885, I think she was, she was built. She's one of, the, one of the first real big schooner racing yachts. Amazing That's project. Cool. And then when you go into the actual school, the facility is in the old um, Jamestown Electric Light Building. So it was a building from the cables. The generators were in that building. The cables that lit Jamestown 
went under the under the harbor over to there and that facility is awesome and they restore it's a restoration school it's not a new build school so everything that they do in there is off the they save an old boat it's pretty radical so after checking out iris we headed to our next destination so it started as a hardware store in the 70s in jamestown and uh and then they started mailing a catalog and they grew a fair amount and then my dad bought them in 97, 98, and then I sort of I started working for my dad pretty early, and then we moved to Bristol in 2000 and built the website, mm -hmm. and that was in another that was at 500 Wood Street, so that was at the old that was the old um, Chuck Taylor factory. Oh, was it like oh, a yeah. big mill building? Yeah, we went uh, there first thinking yeah, was it. Was yeah, plug Jamestown distributors and they put this address in that one. Yeah, Google Google still knows yeah. it as that. Right, so so we were there, and then. Um, and then in, in 2004, we bought this place. And this is the old Hall Spars building. So they have, you can see where it's painted on the ceiling. So these were all bays. And that's why they have the really, all the garage doors, because they'd pull a mast out one, yeah. and then pull it in the next one and paint it, and pull it out that one, and rig it, and pull it out that one. So, um, so we've been here since, since then. And then we bought the building next door. Cool. So and that's where the shop is. Um, so now we have a cool store, which is really nice. It's nice to be able to touch it and feel yeah. it. And it's pretty important for boaters. Yeah. Because you know, sometimes you don't know what size hinge you need. Yeah, no, exactly. You know? So, um, and here, let's show you the warehouse. So we got a tour of the back end of the operation. We got to go out back in the warehouse and Mike showed us the routes that the employees take, how they pick things off the shelves, how they inventory things. Pretty cool process. We also got to see their special attention to detail. Depending on the product, we ship out um, extra stuff to help the customer. So these are all samples that will go probably with any quart of varnish or quart of paint. And that way it's just, you know, it's sort of the unexpected delight that you get in the box. And then a quick tour through the second warehouse before heading into the workshop. So uh, we're really lucky. They, they um, we only really need the last, yeah, that, that's about 10,000 and this is eight. So we sort of, we've been able to use this as a shop, so we do a lot of training. Um, and, uh, and then we, we fiddle with our own projects. And we even have a fan to pull air out. And then at least we can make a mess in here, so we can use mm -hmm. a grinder. Yeah. We can do a lot of sanding. Yep. Um, so that's usually what we'll do. Like tonight, I think we're going to make a mess, so we'll close this and turn the fans on. So yeah, you guys are probably wondering by now, what are we doing getting a tour of Jamestown Distributors by the owner, Mike? Um, have we sold out already? No way. Mike saw our video um, of the year and a half review on Sailing Anarchy, and basically they contacted us and asked us what they can do to help. So we were down there talking to him, telling him about the project and seeing what we can work out. So how long do you think it's gonna take? Uh, the stock answer <coughs> is 9,000 hours worth of work, Right. so two to ten years. Right, right. But ten years is a long time. Ten years is a long time. We're hoping it's not going to take ten years. No, yeah. I can't imagine you're going to do it for ten years, right? But even if so. we did, that puts us, what, 42 years old with a brand new boat. That's not that right, bad. Right, right. Yeah, the way we look at it is, you know, if nobody cares, nobody donates, nobody follows, we're still gonna build the boat. It's just gonna take right. us longer. Right, 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 right. right, right. <laughs> and it just changes the timeline. Yeah. So, so, and because you'll be able to not have to work so much doing anything else. Yeah. Or you also there. Are, where else can we um, save you time? Are you doing other stuff on the side? Yeah, Alex actually just quit his job, um, and I'm doing tree work for a buddy and snow plowing this winter. Right. So right. making some extra money and it's flexible, which is really nice. Right. Yeah. And then I quit the gym so I could cash in my 401k, and that's kind of our uh, slush fund. Right, right, right on. So yeah, we're in it. Right, yeah, <laughs> definitely in it. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, we're going tomorrow to go look at a boat a bit north of here. It's a 32-foot Atkin. Uh -huh. um, and it's ready for the junkyard, but the whole thing's outfitted with bronze. Right. It's got right. a bronze windlass, mono fuel tanks, copper right. water tanks. Yeah. So we're gonna go see. We might buy that, get it trucked out to us, and then rip that apart this winter. Right. right. Um, the guy was saying it has a teak backbone, so it sounds like some of it's squishy, but right. even right. if some of it isn't, we can throw it up on our monster bandsaw and resaw it, which right. would be really nice. Right. Right. The teak's not cheap. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. So we'll that's see what really happens. That's a good idea. But right, right. Everyone's still saying, where the heck's the boat? Right, right. 
which is coming soon. We've got there's a lot of parts now, which people don't really see. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, all oh, the yeah. parts are scattered around, and we're like, pretty soon we're gonna start putting those together. And yeah, I mean that was do, kind of the cool thing fast. about putting out that video that you saw in um, Sailing Anarchy. Right. It was like, this is everything we've done from the start. And right. People were like, right. wow, I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, yeah, we did all that in a year and a half, and we both worked full time. Yeah. Right. And have you built some of the frames? Yeah, we've got uh, two and a half station molds done out of 14 or 15. Um, we started that last winter, and then we got the new bandsaw, which is going to be a lot to, uh, yeah, you saw that. Right, right. Um, and then I broke my ankle. Right. And then we just kind of got sidetracked with keel timber and everything else. So right. we'll get back to making And are you molds gluing soon. stuff together? Uh, some stuff, yeah. So we didn't have any timbers big enough for the, most of the backbone pieces. The ones that we did cut, a lot of them checked too badly to use. So right. we ended up laminating the bow and the stern. Right. Nice. Um, so we used resource and all for that since it's oak. Right, right, um, right. But those are all glued up. And then our keel timber, as you saw, that's one piece. Yeah. Uh, um, and then that should be more or less the end of the gluing. Right, right, right on, right on. Yeah, I mean, have you talked to many of the, is wooden boat shown any interest? Yeah, we've oh, actually yeah. Um, they've been helpful talking with uh, Ann Bryant, who's one of their assistant editors. So we were up there for the film festival yeah. in Bucksport, Maine. Right. And that's what we did that year and a half. That's what thing that was for. that yeah. project. That was like the big push to get that done to show it at the film festival. Nice. And we won audience favorite award for that. There you go. Which was cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and it wouldn't books super super psyched and we were talking at some point about maybe doing an article about sourcing the lead and the timber and uh -huh. the, the yeah. tools and all that kind of stuff and yeah. so we'll, I'm sure we'll do some things down the road I mean Devil. the other thing too is like to have a start to end build right. done by like two guys and it's all documented yeah it's pretty good yeah, and it's I mean, all amateurs you know like you go into a yeah. fully operational boat shop where you got a whole bunch of professionals working and you look at that and you're like well yeah I'm sure of course. they can build a giant beautiful boat right, right, like, right, I don't right. have those facilities. Right, right. But then you look at what we're doing and our facilities aren't amazing, our tools aren't that spectacular. Right, and right. Getting it done. Yeah, no, it's sweet. <laughs> it's totally sweet. You know, we had a lot of people say, you'll never find all the lead, you'll never get a timber big enough for your keel timber, right, you'll never right. do this, you'll never do that, and we're just like, check, check, yeah, check, yeah, check, yeah, check. Yeah, like, what awesome. else you got? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, awesome. Keep coming. And the right, hope is right. to just I don't know, for all the naysayers to put something out there that people can point to and be like, yeah, look at these two guys. They never built a boat before. They've never done these videos before. Right. And they swung for the fences and they just had a shit ton of chutzpah. Right, right, right. They got it done. Now, we have a bunch of friends who are quite accomplished sailors. Right. So the plan is to get the boat in the water and then just be crew on our own boat for a while. Right, so right. We, you know, learn how to handle it. Right, right. And and then uh, and then just explore planet Earth. That's the hope. Exactly. That's the plan. This is basically just an adventure vehicle for us. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, that's how we look at. A lot of people see it as the boat is like the end all, be all, and we're like, no, for us, the boat's right, just the right, beginning. Right, right, right. Yeah, we. I I I took the kids out of school last last winter, this past winter, and we went to the Bahamas for nine weeks. Nice. Yeah. And it was pretty neat. We probably full, learned more in that than they did in school. We went from the Abacos down to Eleuthera and then uh, across to the Exumas. And, uh, and it was cool, you know, we saw tons of sharks and, uh, and stingrays and pigs on the beach and iguanas nice. and That's a bunch awesome. of fish. Yeah, it was cool. It was really neat. The water is so incredible. Like, you, you just can't imagine. You know, it's like a dream, but then you're there, and then you wake up the next day, and you're there, and then you wake up. You know, like, it's really, it can be like this all the time if we live here. Yeah. You know? And you're like, why do we live in New England? I mean, that's, that's exactly why we're building this yeah, boat. Yeah. <laughs> what we love most about the boating community so far is that's exactly what it is. It's a community. We have come across so many people that have helped us out that have just wanted to be part of this project. Not only people, but companies as well. Back when we were doing the sawmilling, um, Woodland Mills got a hold of us, um, heard about the project, and basically asked us what they could do. So they uh, hooked us up with some hats, hooked us up with some parts for the sawmill, which was really awesome of them. You may have seen Ann Bryant in some of the last videos. Um, she's an assistant editor at Wooden Boat. She has been championing our cause since she's heard of us. She worked on setting up the uh, International Maritime Film Festival that uh, you guys saw our short film for last month. Um, that was really cool. 
She's also just been hooking us up with so many other people. Wooden Boat's also been amazing. There's a Wooden Boat forum that they uh, keep up and that Steve has been haunting forever. We've got so much help through them. And then there's been countless people that have shown up here and given us help in person, which has been really amazing. Not to mention all the people that find value in the videos and have decided to donate on Patreon. It helps so much. So if we can highlight some of these amazing people and some of these amazing companies that we really believe in, we're happy to do so. We rounded everything off by hanging out with the JD team for their weekly shop night. We camped out in Mike's backyard, and before we left, we went to check out Victoria, a boat one of the wooden boat forum people tipped us off to that was being sold on Craigslist. She is absolutely decked out in bronze, but ready for the scrapyard. So we went to see what that was all about. Come back for the next episode for more on that.